All right, everybody. How y'all doing? Tom Lydon with you. Thank you for listening to the latest edition of the Westwood Living Podcast. And I was just given a, I don't know, he kind of couched his preparedness here. Chris Hancock is here. And I don't view you to be a person who'd be concerned about having a conversation. <laughs> I'm not concerned. I'm right. just not prepared. Raise that microphone oh, up. Sorry about that, That's Tom. That's right. See, rookie mistake. <laughs> you should be more concerned with the microphone than what you're about to say. This is a man that quite literally you have seen about town because... I would almost guarantee you, if you drive around Westwood, at one point or another, you have seen the shiny dome of Chris <laughs> Hancock running, and that has become a part of who you are. That's interesting, because I get that all the time. Hey, I saw you on yeah. High Street. <laughs> and I have other people that look like me getting credit for being me, for running. Not fair. Yeah. <laughs> like you've worked hard for that yeah, reputation. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Well, the reason I wanted to connect with you, uh, which we'll get to eventually, is that you've done such a great job raising money uh, over many years, and I'm going to pick through that a little bit. But before that, uh, I have learned over the course of the last few months and even the years, I've gotten to know you a little bit better. Wow, how widespread your family is. You know, you're married <laughs> to Jess Hancock, who is one of our sponsors in Westwood Living, which I'm very appreciative of. And, you know, Jess, of course, is the uh, daughter, one of the daughters of charlie donahue yep. so i've been figuring it all out I gotta be honest i've been just trying <laughs> yeah. to piece this puzzle together yeah. take me through your experience of living in westwood moving to westwood and being a part of the uh, kind of a historic family here right? yeah so uh jessica and i we originally lived in brockton where i grew up and uh she wanted to move back to where she grew up westwood so we had three kids we moved here about 15 years ago my father-in-law charlie great guy school committee man he's given everything back to this town it's a norwood guy he'll always start out with norwood but he uh, he's put a lot into westwood he's donated stuff to the libraries but my wife and i we wanted our kids to have a an, a great upbringing which i had a great one in brockton but it's different than westwood uh some say better some say worse i say better but Anyway, we moved here. My daughter, Catherine, who's now a sophomore at Fairfield, a nursing major, and my daughter, Lil, is a senior, going to UMass next year, and my son, CJ, will be a freshman in high school next year. So that was the uh, foundation of getting here. Yeah, great. A lot of great cross-pollination there. I went to Fairfield Prep, so I spent oh, four years right yeah. on the campus of Fairfield University, which yeah. is absolutely beautiful. I'm sure yeah. she loves that. Oh, yeah. Perfect distance, isn't it? Oh, it's like yeah. two and a half two hours a half. away, Perfect. so it's not so close. <laughs> She's not knocking yeah. on your door every weekend. Uh, yeah. I would like her to be closer, but Lil, the other one, will be closer. So Yeah, so <laughs> that's actually how I first met your family through Lil because of her uh, great achievement on both the la lacrosse field with two state championships and great basketball player and really just a, a great person who helped me orchestrate the cover shoot for our April issue, which oh, turned yeah. out fantastic. Yeah. So I'm sure your family got some great feedback oh, about yeah. Lil and I her got, teammates being on the cover. I got comments from everywhere about how great the photo shoot was and how great of an experience from the girls. They all said how awesome your photographer was and how great you were, and they, uh, they loved it. They felt like celebrities. Lil wasn't as happy with her individual picture because she looked very fierce like she was a stone cold killer which anyone that knows her knows she's the complete opposite of that but yeah, until it she was starts great. competing though yeah yeah that's I right i mean that girl <laughs> on the field is a beast she's, she is yeah she's pretty pretty impressive and, and we should not let it pass uh, we need to credit rick burned because he's the photographer oh, yes you referenced, yes i'm sorry that's yeah phenomenal <clears throat> we are very lucky to have him as uh, our lead photographer at westwood living all right so let's talk about you and this evolution of running yes w what sports did you play growing up that ultimately led so, you at your age to running so growing up in brockton in the 80s you had to play football if you were an athlete so football was my go-to basketball also but I wasn't quite as good in basketball. So anyway, football, working out, running every day, lifting every day, forever. So I'm 56 now, so it's been 40 years of working out almost every day. When I was younger, my brother, my youngest brother, we had eight, eight boys and a girl. My youngest brother, uh, Paul. Eight boys and a girl? Yes. One family? Oh, you had to stop at that. Holy cow. <laughs> yes, and everyone was a year after one another. So when your parents <laughs> went shopping, they then were broke for a yes. month. Yes. Well, we had food. We were on food stamps. My dad, we he had worked 100 hours a week, and we would have multiple carts, and one kid would be trapped going with him 
shopping, grocery shopping. So it was kind of funny, but, you know, at the time you don't realize that food stamps, there's a stigma to it, which is, I mean, at the time, none of us cared. And now I wear it like a badge of honor. You know, you run food stamps when you grew up and you end up in Westwood. Yeah, but anyway, so my youngest brother, Paul, he, um, so he was diagnosed with leukemia when he was three. And it's funny getting choked up about it, even talking about it now. But anyway, he got diagnosed with leukemia when he was three. I was the only match for a bone marrow transplant, which was experimental back then. And then he got too sick to go forward with the transplant. So he died about six weeks after they said he couldn't have the transplant. So my parents, they founded the Ronald McDonald House of Boston, which is right around the street from Dana-Farber. And it was them and like three other couples that started the house. And it's basically like a home away from home for kids and their families that are treating at Dana Faber, which was then Sydney Faber, uh, and Children's Hospital, they treat uh, the kids that are treating for cancer could stay, and it was affordable. They, it was, I mean, I think they charged ten bucks a night for a family instead of a two or three hundred dollar a night sure. hotel in Boston. They would stay there. So my parents were the founding members on the board of directors forever. Uh, my mother to this day still volunteers. She's eighty, be eighty four this weekend. So my brother is currently on the board of directors. I was for like five years, but so getting back to the, so the Falmouth Road Race, we run every year. It's, this is the 19th year um, to raise money for, it's called the Boston House now because there was a split between the Ronald McDonald House and the, and the now Boston House over foolishness. But anyway, we still raise money. The mission of the house is the exact same. And uh, this is my, I think it's 19th or 18th year running. The easiest part is raising money. The hardest part is running the 7.2 miles in scorching hot weather in those hills of Falmouth. So that's that's the story. You know, it's interesting you said the easy part is raising money because I don't think so. I think that <laughs> when you first jump out and tackle a challenge like this, it's a little daunting to reach out to inevitably those you're closest to first and literally ask them for money handout which yeah. is very <laughs> difficult and challenging but i'm yeah. sure you've gotten much better at it over the years yeah as you took those initial steps and wanted to be a person who would raise money for such a, a charitable cause what got you through that what gave you the motivation the courage the conviction to you know not have any shame in looking someone in the eye and saying like i do want your money because yeah. this is going to a good cause you're right that's a perfect point because it is you you have to realize it's not for you it's for a bigger cause and it's easier i have no guilt asking someone for money for a cause as good as this so when i approach people i almost guilt them if they haven't donated yet i'll remind them and uh i think everyone that i know at this point knows that this is what i do and they expect it so they expect me to come with handout and ask because they know i know it's not for me uh, and and I just use the memory of my brother as like a motivation to say, you know what, screw it. I don't I don't care. I'm not gonna feel as if I'm groveling for someone to give money because it's not going to my my bank account. So it's going to a great place, and uh, yeah, that's how I get through it. Sure, the worst that anybody can say is no. And then once yeah. somebody says no, you just move on because yeah. there's going to be 10 people who say yes. Yeah. I've been fortunate over the course of my career to do a ton of stories about people who've run for causes, dedicated themselves to causes. Obviously, a couple Boston Marathon stories. Yeah. And the one thing that always stood out to me was how they did get through, in your case, the 7.1 miles, yeah. 7.2. Yeah. Uh, tell me if you experienced this. Every mile. They think of something. Yes. Yeah, maybe in your yeah. case, it's your brother or yeah. it's somebody else who you've crossed paths with yeah. over the years. How do you get through the race? Well, so when I run the streets of Westwood every day, I listen to motivational speeches. I listen to David Goggins, Les Brown, uh, Jacko, um, Eric Thomas. These are unbelievable motivational guys. So I listen to that, and they kind of tell you just think of like what's important in your life and like what's more important than your family so i think of like my kids when i'm running so it kind of you think okay maybe this will give me another day in my life like an extra day to live and to be able to see my family it's kind of corny but that's that's the way i get through every day
you're an athlete, so there are metrics, and I'm sure that you're always thinking about it, whether it's improving your time, and that may not yes. be as big of a deal now at age 56. But, it is. Uh, it is. <laughs> it it is. does? Yeah. You still always want to have a totally. personal record? Yeah. All right, yeah. good. Yeah. I love it. But yeah. beyond that, I was going to go down the monetary route. I mean, yeah. you had to have kept track of how much you've been able to raise over the years. Yes. Do you know that off to, the top of your head? To, yeah, so right now, as of today, um, I it is 190 three thousand give or take a couple hundred so almost two hundred thousand over the course of it and it started out low it started out i was raising like three or four thousand a year and i mean at the time i thought it was great last year i raised twenty five thousand that's which incredible was pretty amazing yeah i mean that's almost a quarter of what you've raised in 18 yeah, years yeah so i'm hoping i can get to 20 again this year right now at about 13 five somewhere somewhere around there but so uh this is the hot time right now because yeah. people need to step up and make the contributions yes. because you got to get this booked before yeah. the race so how do people make that contribution yeah so i do have a um i have a page i share it on facebook i share it on instagram and on linkedin it's called race roster they're the they're the body that sets the page up um so i could share that page with you well i'll have it here if you're listening to the podcast right now i've already included that link so you'll be able to get right to chris's page and make a donation i, I do want to give a little bit of a plug to uh, one of my sponsors who certainly <laughs> helps you i would guess which is yeah. westwood family chiropractic that's oh, another little link best. we have so i was how did they help you out <laughs> so i was actually dr peter dr john patty Lauren, Paula, Corinne, Catherine. Catherine. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, you become I, part of the family. Well, you yeah, know the they are, you I, do, I do feel like they're part of my family. I love going in there. I love every one of them that treats me. But I go three days a week, and uh, I've been going to them for ten years. Peter, I feel like he's a brother. John, more like a son, because he's about twelve. <laughs> uh, but, but anyway, he they're they're the best. I love. I I go there. They actually make me. My back, I, I actually had herniated discs about probably less than 10 years ago, and they got me back uh, to full full recovery, and uh, they're, they're the best. I can't say enough about them and a bunch of your other sponsors, too. <laughs> but I love those guys. They're the best. Most notably your wife, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> you love course, her the of most. Of course, of course, of course. <laughs> well, I used to work with a woman in Detroit. Her name was Carolyn Clifford, and you, know, you had nine. Uh, she had 13. Oh. And so I once uh, asked her, I said, hey, c can you just rattle off all your siblings' names for me? And I found it hilarious that she could do it. I'm going to put you on In the spot. Order. Do it. Rattle them off. In order. Marty, Teddy, Michael, Cindy, John, Danny, Chris, Paul. Easy. Marty, Cindy, Teddy, Michael, John, Danny, Jimmy, Chris, Paul. Fantastic. <laughs> and you are raising money for specifically what? The Boston House. And you can obviously follow the link right here at the bottom of this podcast and Listen, if you have other great people like Chris who you want me to connect with and help tell their stories and share their stories across the Westwood Living Podcast Network, definitely reach out. Send an email, tleiden at bestversionmedia.com. But this is what it's all about, just trying to shine a light on people who are doing great things. And congratulations to you. Thanks, Good luck. Tom. I'm going to make the commitment. I'm giving you 100 bucks. I love it. So I'm in. So that Thank number you. just raised a little bit. <laughs> We're getting and, closer. Uh, hopefully we <laughs> kind of raised that thermometer. I'm sure you've got that thermometer goal, right? Yes, to get that thing absolutely. Going. Congrats, Thanks, Tom. You got Thank it. you. That's Chris Hancock, everybody. And thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Westwood Living Podcast.